Hi, my name is Ziad Fayad. I'm part of the Einstein Analytics product team and uh, I want to show you in this video how to create date buckets in recipes and I'll tell you why this is actually uh, something you should definitely consider. So I just loaded uh, an existing recipe and um, this recipe I built based on uh, actually two data sets but for our purpose today I'm just gonna focus on one of the date fields and you can see this is close date and I've already built a uh, close date years and close date quarters so the way you want to go about this again from the drop down of the date field there's an option to create buckets so you click on bucket and you have two options again absolute um, I have not seen a lot of use cases but it is in theory possible to go and create exact buckets for exact dates um, I think if you only looking at a year or two with a very custom uh, calendar day uh, sorry calendar uh, uh, yeah days you want to look at or some holidays or work period and again this is not the recommended way but it is possible to go really manually select for each you know between each period and each period and give it a name give it a week name or whatever is needed even months and the other powerful one uh, is relative so you can create relative now you have to remember this is by first it is by certain uh, date part so it's it, all of these buckets could be by years or they could all be for quarters or could be for month week and day and that's why for example you see here there's by years and there's by quarters and if i wanted months it would be a separate field and so on and so on so let's say um I wanted to, um, you know, let's pick up weeks since we have cores there already. And uh, the first range, so current week, current day, I'm gonna call this current week, for example. And then I'm gonna add another range. And let's say I want last week, so I'm gonna click here and go back, you know, minus one. And, oh, sorry, this two weeks right here, one week ago, one week ago. And you can actually type the number here so you're not limited to six you can type whatever number you want and um, the other thing I don't know if you noticed for the moment this was red so if you see this this is giving me a red invalid range I'll explain it in a bit so your ranges cannot overlap and uh, but once once you select the values that you want what you need to know and um, I, again just just one of those things and I, I, I believe we have logged use a story for this um, the way you want to close this menu is just click on this small space right here again just you know um, we are aware of this and we've locked something for it but for now you close that menu and now we have two ranges and when I said the red was coming up because they cannot overlap I mean I mean think about it if you have a row any row of data this date can either be current week or something else like it cannot be two at the same time that's why your ranges cannot overlap so I'm gonna call this last week and uh, I can again this is because of this overlapping I'm gonna go back and say two weeks uh, two weeks ago right here and again click on this little space uh, two weeks ago plus maybe make it like this and I'm just gonna stop at the four weeks okay maybe three weeks ago Uh, three, three weeks ago and so on if you want but let's let's stop right here and um, what you do not want to forget to is this one right here the bucket remaining values because you don't want the other values just to show as as they are dates right so you want to bucket everything else let's call it other weeks right other weeks and now that I'm done I can hit add and I will see now that my field got created other weeks two weeks other weeks etc 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 so so far we're kind of building something to be used later on the dashboard I'll tell you in a bit why this is very important um, but one more thing you might want to do is double check on this field got created column profile the attributes and you might want to change the API name again maybe CD weeks 
and here whoops okay yep it was taken the fact cd weeks okay and i'm, I'm kind of done here i'm gonna update my data set and say okay run it run it now not sure if it's going to be done in time but the the reason this is very important let me take a look really quick it's running is when you go to the dashboard and you have those requirements where you want to provide toggles this will save you from static steps and bindings which a lot of users previously used to do and um, i'm not sure if it's just not uh, aware of the uh, capability to uh, to create these derived fields or not let me show you what i mean i'm gonna go back to here and it is uh, also a good uh, good opportunity to remind you of the uh, by the way i gotta remember what data set uh, hold on really quick so this was opportunity accnt so if I create a quick dashboard, um, you can use the date widget. Absolutely, we have enhanced it, right? And you can see now if you add uh, this guy and close date, you can see that there are options. Okay, you got all time and you can scroll down. Let me make it a little bit bigger. You can see all these options, current quarter, even month, days. Okay, I don't see weeks, so that was a good one I created. But also, even if quarters, you might want two quarters ago, three quarters ago, so you could create it similarly. Now, why this is important? Because now, I do not need to create static steps with values and bind them to widgets. All what I have to do is just create a step based on the same data set. And this time, I'm gonna group by the CD weeks. And it did not pick it up, so give me one second. Let me make sure I refreshed correctly. And looking at the right one, ACCNT. There you go, this one. So if I group by weeks, ah, did not pick it up and i will look into it at the end but let, let me show you with quarters for example so if i group by cd quarters i have current quarter last year same quarter other quarters so that this was another uh, column the same thing right what you want to make sure if you're going to use it for toggles just make sure you drop the other quarters usually it's not required so you want to filter by cd and uh, quarters they are only canon quarter last year, same quarter, add, done. And now what you can do is use that famous toggle right here, for example, and add this here, and all of a sudden you got your uh, selectors. And same thing I could do with the other values. For example, let's say now I wanna bring CD years, because usually users have multiple uh, requirements for the uh, date. Uh, slice and dice sorry this is years again I'm clicking too fast for it and there you go just these ones do not forget to name your steps I forgot on the first one it's okay and whoops I'm gonna bring a toggle and again I have the toggle for here and now, even if I had any chart, right? So if I had a chart that's uh, grouped by industry, for example, and some sum of amount, and let's say industry. Okay, so now you can see right there out of the box without bindings, without anything, I can just click on these and they work fine. And again, I could have built anything I wanted in the uh, data set itself. Uh, sorry in the recipe and again consequentially in, in the consequently in the data set itself so this should avoid static steps avoid bindings um and if you're really really picky about this small space you can always go here to default and say uh cell spacing vertical zero whoops not the vertical and to say horizontal and there you go now it looks very seamless as if the same top 